What's going on today, Mike? We are uh, getting some stuff done and leaving here about 30 minutes to go wrestle. So this I'm having my dinner. So normally, normally Bree would be uh, cooking for me and taking care of me because she's a sweetheart, but she is taking care of herself today. Um, I think she's getting her nails done or something. Um, but so we had some leftover ground turkey, three eggs, a half an avocado, and a little spinach salad. And this is what a typical meal looks like for about the next 12 weeks. The weight cut, everybody thinks the weight cut starts the week of the fight. Everybody thinks you add cardio and you add miles to, to the treadmill and you throw on the sauna suits and all that stuff is fine and dandy because all of us have to do certain things that week. But the actual weight cut starts eight weeks out, 10 weeks out. It's how good are you gonna eat? How disciplined are you gonna be? You think I like ground turkey and yeah, eggs? <laughs> and actually, I mean, you get used to it and you know it's for a purpose. I know I, know I have to eat like this so I can make weight, so I can win fights, so I can leave a legacy, so I can make money, so I can take care of my family. It's all encompassed, but you know, you just see these guys missing weight and dying to make weight. I mean, they don't cut any more weight than I do. I'm 182 right now. I've been as high as 192 in the last um, six months, you know, so my weight kind of fluctuates and body fat fluctuates and whatnot. But as you'll see from our workout videos, I'm very lean right now because I've been eating good, knowing that I was going to have this fight in June. So I'm excited about it. Are these vlogs better than UFC embedded? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's the fight camp going? Fight camp? Did well, you start yet or no? No, I mean, I kind of do a... I train year-round, you know. I'm always training. Do I take time off? Let my body heal, let my head heal, let little nagging injuries heal, make sure I don't get burnt out, of course, but... You know, I'm pretty much trying to stay in shape year round. I'm not, I'm not always in fight shape, but I'm always in decent shape because I'm always working out, and it helps. I, you know, my wife and I, Bree and I, live a, you know, a pretty healthy lifestyle. We both enjoy eating right. We both enjoy taking care of our bodies. We both enjoy fitness. We both enjoy getting better um, and and pursuing a fitness journey. So that helps. But I mean, right now we're you know 12 weeks out. So right now is just about start to clean up my diet, start working on little things, start getting in better shape. I mean, my weight's already coming down and I'm just a lot leaner than I usually am coming into camp. And I think it's just because I've, I've been focused on knowing that I was gonna have some time in between this fight camp, these two fight camps or these two fights. So, you know, I, had, I took, some, took a little bit of time off in the very beginning and then I've just been getting after it. I've been trying to get better. You know, that's really what the, what it is, a constant quest of trying to get better. So when are you going to release the first episode? <laughs> I just looked over it. There's one, one or two things I want to change. So one of, the, one of the other things that I started incorporating too with my meals is I do um, branch chain amino acids, BCAAs. So this is uh, cherry limeade or something flavored. I always go with Diamond Ties. Hold on, don't move. These are the ones I've been taking. Diamond Ties, BCAA, Complex 50-50. So, um, they're good. I got the Cherry Limeade and I think Blue Raspberry or something are the two new flavors, which are very good. Really, it doesn't matter about the flavor. It doesn't matter anything. Just as long as you're getting the BCAAs, Leucine, is Isoleucine, Valine. Um, because basically what happens, it helps with the protein synthesis. So, you can eat and drink as much protein as you want, but if, if the protein isn't actually broken down and used for your muscles, you're not gonna recover. Or if you want your muscles to grow, if you're trying to get bigger, your muscles aren't gonna get bigger. If you're like me and you don't really necessarily wanna grow muscle, but you wanna maintain muscle and make sure you're, you don't have any muscle wasting because you're working out so hard, I mean, you gotta realize, man, you gotta realize I'm working out so hard. I'm, I'm literally two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, and these are hard, hard workouts. And with the amount of calories that I'm burning, with the amount of just junk that I'm putting my body through, if I don't focus on recovery, if I don't focus on a good lean protein, which I use the Dimatize ISO 100, um, 
and then the BCAAs, these are the, my two saviors that I've had in my supplement regimen for the last two or three years now. So I actually like to drink the BCAAs as I'm eating. So as I'm ingesting the protein, as I'm bringing the protein in, I'm washing it down with BCAAs. Some would say that's overkill, but you can't have too many BCAAs. I mean, if you're worried about your weight, I mean, it's doesn't even have calories on here, but I mean, it's it's zero sugars basically. So it's you're not going to get a ton of calories. You're not going to get a ton of sugar. I drink, I drink about four of these a day. You know, I'll drink one in the morning maybe when I'm chilling and sipping my coffee. Drink one during during my first workout and towards the end of my workout, and then I'll have another one throughout the middle of the day, and then another one for my second workout. I mean, it's kind of just like drinking. You know, it kind of takes you back to being a kid and mixing Kool-Aid and mixing, you know, mixing all those things. Except you're not getting the, the junk that a lot of the sports drinks have these days. Um, not to mention any names, but you know, they're just not good for your, not good for you. They have all kinds of dyes in them. And they're not good for your teeth. They're not good for all that stuff. So, BCAAs, ISO 100, lean protein, is uh, two of my my big time saviors during training camp. Shout out to Diamond Ties. Always shout out to Diamond Ties. I mean, I am sponsored by them. I've, I've been sponsored by them for about a year. I mean, honestly, the funny thing is, the best thing that you can do as an athlete, the best thing you can do as someone who wants to get sponsored, whether you're an athlete, whether you're whether you are, is is find find a company that you like, and try to get sponsored by them. You know, I mean, I have been guilty of it in the past, I and mean, there's a lot of people out there who probably are sponsored by certain certain companies, and they're doing it just for the free products or the money or whatever they are. Dimatize is a product. Dimatize are products that I've used literally over the last probably two or three years, um, and really, really got good results from their BCAAs and their uh, their protein. Um, and then all of a sudden, I started to develop a relationship with them because I, I liked their pro their their products, their protein, and the amino so much that I, you know, kind of reached out to them. And now here I am, sponsored by them, and I'll be, uh, you know, rocking their stuff between now and. Shoot, who knows how long, but they're they're a great company, and um, I just can't say enough good things about the company. So, either way, when we're talking in general, get your BCAAs, get, get your BCAAs, get your lean protein, and if you're going to go with Dimatize, use their ISO 100 protein or these BCAAs, Complex 50-50. Dude, this is Lanco. Greatest love story. Hey, if you don't like country music, I don't know if I can trust you. Two things. I, let me drop some wisdom for you right now. Two things. There's two types of people in this world that I have trouble trusting. Number one, if you don't like coffee. And number two, if you don't like country music. Makes you a little bit hard to trust. I might still trust you, but you just have to prove yourself extra hard. As my wife, she loves coffee and loves country music. That's why we're together, or at least one of the reasons. We are headed down to Modern Day High School. Gonna get into a nice high school wrestling room. The uh, it's funny, you know. I growing up all throughout high school wrestling in a, in a wrestling room and then all throughout college wrestling in a, in a college wrestling room the Mizzou wrestling room and then now these days when I wrestle anywhere else you know whether it's an MMA gym or the other day you know me and Jeff worked out at wrestled at the UFC gym up in Mission Valley and it was even a nice little room and it was secluded but there's just something about there's just something about a wrestling room that's just it's a little grittier it makes you want to work a little bit harder. It reminds you a little bit more of where you came from. So um, we switched it up today, and I told Jeff to find us a, a wrestling room, and he did. So me and him and his brother Teddy are going to do a little wrestling tonight, three-man three man group, get some drilling in, get some uh, get some drilling in, and get some hopefully some live wrestling in and go over some stuff. we got a wrestling clinic coming up here in a couple weeks, so figure out what I'm going to teach there and get after it. Do you ever bring in anyone big for your sparring partners for, uh, for camps? Not really. I mean, to me, to me, the older I get, the more I realize that, I mean, I can push myself. 
against anybody, and I can get some good sparring in with a, with a lot of guys. So I mean, there's there's going to be enough opportunity in whatever gym I'm training at to find good good sparring partners. You know. Do you feel like you're being someone in to emulate the dude? Absolutely not. <laughs> No, absolutely not. I mean, I think, I think he's basic. You know, I think, I think everybody's basic. I think everybody. You know, I mean, so many, so many of these guys, you're not really going to see much special. You know, I mean, last fight I fought Benson Henderson. Um, it was a, my first time in my career fighting a southpaw. Um, you did really well on that. Yeah. So it was my first time fighting a southpaw. F first time fighting a southpaw. So I had to, uh, you know, I had to improvise, adapt, overcome, figure out how to fight a southpaw, figure out, you know, I didn't need to bring any guys in because whatever gym you're training at, there's going to be some good southpaws. And if there's not, you just kind of tailor it and, and find some guys um, who can work southpaw against you. You know, I mean, this sport isn't that complicated. You know, there's, I mean, case in point, Tyron Woodley, his last two fights, he fought Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He brought in um, Raymond Daniels and he brought in Sage Northcutt and those are good I those are those are good those are those kind of situations where you need to because Steven Steven Thompson is such a different type of fighter he's such a comes from that sport karate background where it's not like a normal fight it's not like a basic MMA fighter boxing kickboxing wrestling grappling you know he's a he was a problem in and of himself just with his his background and the way that he moves and the way that he strikes and the way that his defense is and how how quickly he can close the distance distance and how he can move and do angles so you know Tyron bringing in a guy like Sage Northcutt bringing in Raymond Daniels those are those are instances where you need to do that but Brent Primus is a good fighter undefeated hungry talented believes in himself and June 24th, he's going to come to try to take my head off, and he's going to come come to try and take my belt. But there's nothing specific about him or different about him that I really need to worry about. You know, I'm going to focus on myself. I'm going to focus on my game plan, where I'm going to exploit him. Focus on where I can get better, and then we're going to go from there. And uh, I believe in my coaches. I believe in my training partners. I believe in myself above all, and I believe in the calling on my life. So June 24th is going down, and you know. I look forward to the next 12 weeks of being a phenomenal training camp, pre-camp, in camp, and then taper off, finish camp, firing on all cylinders, going out there, Madison Square Garden, and just blowing the roof off the place. Do you find fighting in the style of like belt ordering different because it has no corners, like say like a boxing square ring, or like an octagon has like it does have corners? That question makes sense. Yeah, no, it absolutely does, and, and I, I get that question a lot, you know, and and I think that that was what set um, Bellator apart. You know, when, when mixed martial arts first started, it was the UFC, and it was an octagon with eight sides, which means there's you know all those corners where you can kind of put a guy into. But I mean, for the most part, it's still a circular prism. You know, I, I've only fought in a circle ring, so I can't attest to what it would be like in an octagon with with corners but I train in octagons all the time all these all these MMA gyms around the country have you know a boxing ring or a hexagon or a pentagon or some kind of weird shape and they have corners you know so so you learn how to you learn how to what I don't know I don't know what a rhombus is but uh you know the uh you know so you can kind of corner guys and put them in in corners but I mean really you know, it's about cutting off the cage. Whether it's a boxing ring, you have to cut off the cage. So when, when your opponent steps to his left, you have to take an even bigger step to your right to make sure he doesn't get out and run. I mean, if you go back and watch some of the, the fights that I lost, I mean, the guys were just the guys were just running away and trying to point fight, and I ate too many punches, and, <laughs> and I've tried to, uh, yeah, and I've tried to uh, change, I've tried to change that style. You know, I've tried to, tried to learn how to, corner guys even though it is a, a circle you can still you can still pigeonhole them and 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 make them take steps back until their butt hits the cage and then you're then you're in that range where you can hit them you know I mean I did a really good job against Patricky Pitbull and he walked right into that right hand because I threw the jab came in and and hit him hit him with the right hand and put him to sleep so that's really uh, kind of it's an acquired skill it's not easy you know a lot of people think you know 
inside the cage, what they see, they don't really realize what's going on. You know, you really have to, you really have to know how to cut guys off and cut the cage off so they they kind of get pushed back up against the cage and then you can put them in that, put them in your crosshairs. How did you meet Jeff? I met Jeff, I met Jeff through Todd Durkin. Uh, so whenever I, uh, whenever I hurt my back right before the first Will Brooks fight, I, uh, you know, went through that camp and back was in pain and got done and lost the fight and then, you know, looked up, I don't know, back pain rehab or something on, on YouTube and found this guy named Todd Durkin and he was screaming and he was talking about motivation and he was doing this, he was yelling about this and yelling about that and I found out he was Drew Brees' trainer because I followed Drew, Pre Drew Brees on social media, realized he was training in San Diego with this guy named Todd Durkin. So I called, I called him up and started training with Todd and then, you know, Todd isn't always available so um, if he's not available, he's going to put you with one of his highly respected trainers that he has there. And Jeff wrestled at um, wrestled in California here, wrestled at the Division One level at UC Davis. So he's got he's got a really good you know wrestling background. He wrestled Division One, and uh, so he knows a how to train people, how to train wrestlers and MMA fighters, especially in the. Uh, in the at Fitness Quest 10 in the gym, and then he also you know wrestles with me, and he you know holds his own. He's hasn't hasn't wrestled in years, and I'm wrestling every week, and he still gives me a run for my money. So he's he's good. And then his brother, his brother Teddy, also wrestled at uh, Grand Canyon State, wrestled here in California. So just a group of tough dudes, two brothers, and I'm gonna get freaking the Bristols beating me up tonight. So that's the that's the goal though, you know, you gotta surround yourself with, with good people, not just good people, but people who are gonna push you, you know, and that's what that's what Jeff is. I know I know there's there's very few people out there who I feel like I, I can get outworked, you know, or at least somebody who can come close to work outworking me and Jeff's one of those guys, you know, he's he works at Fitness Quest How old is he? Five AM till seven PM. He's thirty thirty two, I believe. I think he's a year older than me. He's super young. Yeah, he's young. You know, looks young. He's in shape. You know, he's very strong. You know, so he works 12-hour days, and he, you know, does a lot of good stuff. And he's a he's a wrestler at heart. So you know, he's a you know he's a hard worker. So it's a he's a good guy to be rolling around with. He's a good guy to be trained by. Uh, Cause you know he ain't slacking. And, you know, it all comes from Todd Durkin's lineage. You know, I actually got a black belt lineage. Watch this. This is what I woke up to this morning. I don't know what you woke up to this morning, but this is what this is what I woke up to this morning. Hey, Mike. Morning, sleepyhead. I'm working. I'm getting better right now. Yup. I'm getting better. You're just getting up, having your eggs. <laughs> I got this at 6:30 this morning. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> and he goes on. And he goes on. <laughs> that's that's what I woke up to this morning at like I woke up at 8 or like 7 30 ish but this was on my phone and it, and it said I received it at like 6 a.m. so that's you know that's the kind of people that you surround yourself with the kind of people that you're just like you ask yourself how they you know I get asked that a lot of times by fans or by young wrestlers or by young aspiring MMA fighters how do you stay motivated and I think a lot of it is I realize the opportunity that I've been given but I also only surround myself with people like that you know people like People like Todd Durkin who are up at 6 a.m. doing his quiet time and, and doing his devotional and his his morning routine at his at his house in his um, in his garage lifting weights and is thinking about me you know is thinking about me and, and preparing me and helping me get better and now I'm going to wrestle at 6:30 p.m. My trainer who not only trains me in my fitness gym but he also now wrestles with me often a, has been up since 5 a.m. so he's already been up. 13 hours and he's about to wrestle, you know, for two hours. So who are you surrounding yourself with? You know, I think, I think too many times in life we, we look at our bodies and we think we're just mere humans and we're, oh, I'm tired or, oh, I have this nagging injury or I have, I have this pain. But if you understood what people go through on a daily basis and how hard people push themselves, you're going to look at yourself like you're slacking. And that's what I do a lot because I, I surround myself with the Todd Durkins, the Jeff Bristols, you know, 
All my coaches that I surround myself with are that way. All of my training partners who I who I truly get to know and surround myself with. Of course, there's some slackers that I kind of that I have to train with, but I'm not going to get close to those guys. And that's really the way it is. You know, if if you're not if you're not propelling me forward, if you're not helping me get better, if you don't have goals like I have, if you don't have a vision like I have, not necessarily to be a fighter, not necessarily to be, you know, train and, and do it athletically, but in business or in your relationships or in your marriage or in your faith or in your, all the stuff that I believe in, if you're not pushing yourself and propelling yourself forward, I'm not going to be able to relate to you on a personal level and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to waste my time and energy on you because I have my own goals and I have my own my own drive and I have a wife at home who I who needs my attention needs my love and needs my support and needs needs me to serve her and I have positive people in my life that I need to pour into because they pour into me so I don't have time for for people who who don't want to give their all you know so people ask me all all the time how do you stay motivated not only am I given a phenomenal opportunity to do some amazing things on national TV in front of millions of people and get to do cool stuff like this but I surround myself with people who refuse to give anything less than their best. And that's literally what life is all about. Working as hard as you possibly can and surround yourself with the right people. So, I mean, there's your there's your uh, case in point, you know. Todd Durkin up at 6 a.m. this morning telling me to get up and get motivated. My trainer going to wrestle with me now for two hours after he's already worked a 12-hour day. So what are you doing today to get better? What's your excuse whenever I got guys like this in my life? What's your excuse whenever there's there's not a ton of Todd Durkins and not a ton of Jeff Bristles out there, but there's that 1% of people out there, which means there's millions of people out there working this hard every single day. So find those people, surround yourself with those people, attract those people. And you're not gonna be able to attract those people unless you are one of those kind of people. If you're a slacker, if you're a knucklehead, if you're doing the bad stuff, everybody knows what's right, everybody knows what's wrong. When you're doing, if you're doing that kind of stuff, you're not gonna attract the right kind of people in your life. So, I don't know. I'm no better than anybody else. I have messed up more than anybody else has and I've, and I've made bad decisions and I've, there's been days that I've slacked, but there's always been someone in my circle to be able to pull me back, to be able to lift me up, and then sometimes to be able to humble me whenever I need to be humbled. So, life is all about choices. And one of the greatest choices that you can make is surround yourself with the best people you possibly can. So find yourself someone today. Start with one. And then surround yourself with that one person is going to help you find another person and another person and another person. And all of a sudden your network grows and it turns into this amazing, ridiculously strong group of accountability partners. And before you know it, you reach your goals. It's that simple. I forgot what the question was. <laughs> I forgot what it was too. <laughs> Where are we, Mike? We are at Modern Day High School. I think. Never been here before, so uh, we're looking for Brett Sanchez. Go ahead, do your thing, warm up. We're uh, we're just gonna do our private, like right here. Perfect. All the mat right there. Sounds good to me. June twenty fourth. June twenty fourth. Yeah, so I got twelve weeks. Nice. Who you got? Uh, Brent Primus. His name is 7-0, young, hungry, yeah. undefeated guy, so. Nice, dude, not anymore, huh? Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. I like, I like Bellator because they help wrestlers out. They're like huge. Like they're, yeah, they've signed a lot. I mean, they're a huge fan of wrestlers. Yeah, they've signed a lot. 